Thank you for coming out, man. This looks pretty good. There he is. Look, nope, baby. That's Tyler, the creator. Hi, Tyler. What's up, man? Is y'all good? The fuck is it? Y'all good with that shit? Y'all good with that? Good with that? Good with that? fuck is it? This ain't no performance, man. Yeah, it's it. Wow, I fucking, I've been here before. We had like the second New York show here, huh? That was weird. That was sick. Yo, this is crazy. All you motherfuckers paid $20 to see me talk for an hour. <laughs> and I you guys are board. fucking retarded. <laughs> he, said, he said he's backstage. He's like, you ain't Oprah, nigga. What is this? This is wild. Well, thanks for coming out. This is... This is pretty awkward. I don't know what the fuck we're going to talk about. You don't love me. No, trust me. Yo, hang out with me for an hour and you'll be like, yo, I don't <laughs> like this nigga. All right, well, thanks. <laughs> That's ready? Sick. You ready, son? You ready? Yeah. All Fucking right, man. Sick. So Look at that. They love you, man. I got milk and shit. Y'all could see me come out with the milk. I was swagging on these niggas, man. <laughs> you drink milk. What man. flavor is the milk? N nigga, it's milk. Nick <laughs> Where the fuck you getting milk from, nigga? I want to know what flavor milk. That's tight. Where the fuck you get your milk from? The bodega? We don't got those in L.A., nigga. You got me Waffle Crisp? Throw it to me. Fucking right. Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. I love you. I love you. We don't get this in LA. You guys are lucky. We don't get this shit, yo. Hi, Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Oh, Hi, fuck. Elliot. I forgot about Elliot Hi. Wilson. Give it up for Elliot Wilson. Thank you. He's yo. light skinned and he has a mohawk. And That's not sus magazine. at all. <laughs> I tried to put you in the cover of a magazine, but you yeah, were too young. Fucking sick. You were too young. Yeah. I so. did it. But Wolf, man. So here's the thing. When Wolf came out, I'm Ellie Wilson, Rap Radar. That's Tyler, the creator, as you know. He's taking this hoodie off. But yo, Wolf, oh, man. All right, Wolf album. Hell yeah, you Wolf. Told, you, you're real proud of it, man. You told everybody that it sucked and you didn't grow musically and it was going to sound like the worst piece of shit. And it's actually your best album. You rap better. You make better beats. Like, why did you lie to us? Um... <laughs> Revert, well, reverse psychology works, and I fucking, I hate expectations, because, like, like, you ever, um, like, you ever hear an artist, like, oh, fuck, my new shit is the best shit I made, it's crazy, nigga, I'm, I'm Jesus, <laughs> and, like, and then, like, you hear it, and you're like, what the fuck, this is, like, this shit weak, and, like, when you have expectations for shit, you're disappointed, and you probably won't even give it a chance to actually say the shit is actually tight because you thought it would sound like this. So I didn't let no reviewers hear it. I, every time I talked about it, I would say it's bad. Like, I didn't let people hear it. I didn't, the track list for the, the real track list for the album didn't come out till six days before the album came out. Because when people see track lists, then they expect this and then they see features and then they just won't actually give the album a chance. So the fact that I did that made everyone actually want to listen to the shit just to see what the fuck it was because they didn't know what the fuck to expect. Yeah, and I was happy that you actually played it for me. And it's funny, he came to Rap Radar, he played it for me. But he did, wasn't like that artist that really cares what you think. He just was like fooling around, looking at magazines in the back. and Yeah, you know, I, didn't, like, I didn't play it for anyone. He asked me, and I was like, all right, I'll play it for this nigga. And I played it, and I went there and was this like, skin nigga. I was still in magazines and like tapes and shit, because he got an office with a bunch of shit. I, I stole some shit. Like, I'm not even trying to be funny. <laughs> what did you steal? Don't know, you don't need to worry about that. I thought I could trust you, Tyler. Yeah, I'm a but thief. When did you know, because I remember I spoke to you when I was doing Frank Ocean, and you were saying, you were joking about how you had a little bit of writer's block, or you just didn't feel like, what were you going to rap about after Dude, Goblin? I'm know? not even like being fucking trying to sound pretentious or like I'm better than anyone else, but I actually, I'm so bored with rapping. Like, like I, my thing, I like filming, I like making videos and I like fucking drawing and I like making beats and scoring and making stupid shirts. Like that's my thing. So 
when it came to like, fuck, like when I got writer's block, like I got that shit so fucking bad. Like I didn't know what the fuck to rap about. Like I don't, like I went through my phase of like fucking raping shit. Like, all right, I read, I read yeah. about every serial killer. So what the fuck else? So I had a writer's block until I was like, oh shit, I could just rap about how much money I made last year in a fucking <laughs> bike. Like, and oh, it you worked. You know about my laugh. We, we talked about that backstage. My, my laugh real loud every once in a while. Yo, his time. laugh is awesome. Have you guys noticed it? You'll, you'll notice it. That shit's sick. <laughs> no, but anyhow, you rap about your laugh. Because you mentioned the four-story home a lot, the four-story spot. Dude, I fucking, I mentioned that house so much because literally, like, when Goblin came out, I was literally, like, on my grandmother's floor. Like, I was still, I, I woke up on May 10th, 2011, on my grandma's floor, like, oh shit, I should go to Best Buy and buy my fucking album that came out today. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't really have much growing up. Like, my mom left fucking LA when I was 16, and then like, up until fucking I was 20, I was living on my grandmother's floor and shit, and I never had a backyard, like, all that shit. So, hell yeah, every fucking song, I'ma mention this big ass house that I fucking worked hard for. Got me <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got like a cute little music room like talk about your music room because you always like you show little images of it and like you have an ill vinyl collection like talk about how that's kind of like your oasis within the house right well i like my my backyard is like a deck and it's like it's like trees up there but like i can't getting some shit built up there is so hard so i can't actually get a tree house so I had this room on the side of my room and I basically cut a wall out and it's no stairs. It's like I cut a wall out and I put gold framing around it so it could look like I'm walking into a picture and I got it like painted and like just that's where I play my Xbox and I got bean bags and shit and like my records and I just sit in there 24 seven and just listen to music because I don't have shit better else to do. It's a comfort zone. And I think everyone should have a comfort zone. And you wish like your mom and your sister, but they're not allowed to go into your music room or some shit well, like that. Like how, how does that work? Yeah, they. My mom <laughs> gets so sad because I come home and late at night I go in there, I wake up and I leave, and she she came she literally came in my room this morning like why don't you talk to me? <laughs> uh, Yo, and his, I'm mad yeah. at his mom's because his mom's almost got lost driving him to the airport. He almost missed his flight, and Dude. I'm paying for that motherfucker. 